Carmen. Satan, what a surprise! Ah! Well, nice to meet you. Tell me your problem. Okay. I've been doing my job faithfully for a long, long time. But all the time people misconstrue what I'm trying to accomplish. See? Starting with my looks. I don't even look that way. I just look that way because people make me look that way. They don't understand me. So, here's my problem. Now, I even don't understand myself. I don't understand myself! Calm down, Satan. Sorry. It upsets me because I'm sensitive. I'm actually a sensitive being. Nobody sees that. Everybody says I'm evil. Well, Satan, that does sound like a problem, but I think I can help you. Yeah, I've heard of you. I've heard that you do these hell stories. Heaven stories. Hell, hell stories? Sure. Hell stories? Heaven stories. Heaven? Okay, so tell me the difference. What's a heaven? Hi, little dog. You have more <laughs> power than you know. Satan, Satan, oh, stay on track. I was trying to do my job, sorry. Oh, could you help me? Could you, could you read a he heaven story for me? I mean, my true heaven story. What is the devil actually? What is that? Of course I could read your heaven story. So what do I have to do? Well, you have to sit Scream? here. The screaming help? No! Ah! No, no, oh, there, there will be no screaming required. All you have to do is sit here and open up and let me read your soul. Okay, I will open up. No, no, just oh, spiritually, sorry. spiritually, spiritually, spiritually. Sorry, Sa I Satan, got this please. wrong. I got, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I was just trying to follow your your your, your guidance. It's, I will o it's okay, Satan. Open up. It's okay, Satan. <gasps> just relax. And I will tell everyone who the devil truly is. Thank you. When Satan first appeared in the world, he was the concept of evil to many. They depicted him with Red skin, horns, and a devil's tail. Goat hooves, at often times. Hideous, deformed. But that is not how the devil truly looks. He is one of the most beautiful angels of God. And as the story goes, he refused to love humans more than God and was cast down for it. And now he rules hell and all those who do evil. And you may think that Satan is a bad man who hurts people and wants people to come to hell, but that's just not true. Satan is a being who shows people their own power, who goes and presents it all to them. And if those people are too weak to accept it or are not ready to control their power, then it devours them, and they become evil, in the subjective sense of the word. But the devil isn't here to hurt you. He just wants you to see what you're capable of. He wants you to see that there's more to you than you think. How can that be evil? How can it be wrong to want to show someone their own light? How can it be wrong to want people to accept themselves so they can love? The devil, he never made anyone do anything. He never forced anyone to be evil or to do bad things. That was your choice. The devil made me do it is stupid. He can't make you do anything. He can show you who you are. And then all he can do is watch what you do with it. Blaming Satan for 
all of the bad things in your life and praying to God to take it away isn't how it works. You are God, and so is the devil. The devil is nothing but God hiding behind the mask of someone who wants to show you something. If you don't take his gift, well, why are you blaming him for that? That's not his fault, nor his problem. The devil does his job very well, and he gets nothing but hate for it. And even the people who like him do it as a joke. They find the concept amusing of an evil man. But he's not. He's so full of love and light, and all he wants you to do is love yourself. So, the more you are afraid of yourself, the more that, that love that he has is going to destroy you. But again, that isn't his fault. The devil isn't to blame for your shortcomings. He isn't to blame for your fear. So, in short, the devil is God, and God is the devil, and the devil is not evil. The devil is you, telling you to look at yourself. The devil is everything you don't want to see about yourself. The devil is the concept of you personified into a beautiful man, a being of light, and the devil cannot make you do anything that you don't want to do. But the consequences of resisting the devil are no one's fault but yours. I have questions. Of course! What do you think, since, since I'm God, which I understand now, I had no idea, but since I'm God, Shouldn't we just start churches like devil worship kind of thing? Wouldn't that be cool? First of all, that's already a thing. Second of all... Oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah, there are a few people. Oh. Second of all, the subjective matter is everyone is God. God is every single thing there is. He is all of creation, and that is also you. You are this aspect that shows people, hey, look at you, look at who you are, look at all this power you have. Don't you love it? But some people can't see that and accept that from you, so they... Well, they, they do what they do. They make you an evil. They portray you as a villain, which is ridiculous in my opinion. And churches aren't the way to go. Churches are where people say, oh, this being is above me, but this being is you. Does that make sense? Okay, so basically it would probably be a much better idea if we had one people churches, like a church for Paul, church for Susan, a church for Zoe, a church for God, Earl. So since every person is God, it probably makes more sense if everybody builds a little, little small church with a steeple and just one person fits inside and that's you. No. You have a picture of yourself on the altar and you, you, you pray to it because you're God, right? No, devil, that's not how it works. Although I get where you're coming I'm, from. I'm sorry, I'm really trying to comprehend. I know. Churches aren't the subject matter. The subject matter is that you are all of creation, but you are also nothing of creation. As weird of a concept as that is, everything that you are is all around you, and at the same time you are the nothingness that is in between it. And in that way, Every person who's scared of you just sees themselves reflected in you, and is scared of that. So churches have nothing to do with this. What has to do with it is that you are these people, and these people are afraid of themselves. You can mirror that, and unfortunately you get the uh, short straw for it. So if I really understand that correctly, would I sum myself up as a mirror of fear? More of a mirror of true self. But that would mean that everybody looks like me inside, right? Like... No, Satan. It would mean that everybody can see their own power reflected in you because that's your job. You show people their power. But because of that, they're afraid of it. So you're reflecting their true being at, back at them 
and that's what they're scared of and that's why they say you're evil and that, you know, the Halloween is the devil's birthday and all that stupid stuff. Halloween is not my birthday. No, I know it's not. I've read well, the story. Because I never get cake for Halloween, so it can't be my birthday. Although I have read the story of All Hallows Eve, it's not your birthday. Exactly, so. Oh, see? My mask comes off. <laughs> Apparently, good work. It's a good thing. Uh, okay, so, as one final question. I have a feeling that for a lot of people, just like God is very important, I am very important. Is that the evil personified that you should avoid at all costs? Now, when you take that away, won't a lot of people be very lost in their beliefs, in their orientation in life when you tell them there is no such thing as good and evil? How can these people live who lived for centuries with the idea we have to strive for the good and avoid the evil? But the evil has all the power. I mean, how, how do you live in a world where that does no longer exist? Well, as hard as it may be at first, people have made adjustments like this for years and years and years. And what I think is going to happen is that these people will realize that it's, a, it's okay. They can create their own morals. They don't have to follow the morals of some centuries-old book that some dusty old men wrote. They're letters to each other, you know? They, they will realize that their moral code is something that they can create and they will craft their own sense and per perception of the world. Of course, not all of them. Some people will cling to it till they die, but then they'll just reincarnate and get to try again and that's the beauty of it. You have so many lives to experience so many things and to learn so many things that even just one life of being lost can lead to a life of being found. So even if they are lost, they won't be lost forever. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Satan. I feel much better now. But in just a final note to all of you out there, if you want to give me cake for Halloween, I would take it. <laughs> just say. You heard it your first here, folks. Satan wants cake for Halloween. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I think I'll go back to my elevator. Of course. Get picked down. Yes. Bye. Have a good ride down. Thank you.